Explosive new developments tonight in the murder of DNC staffer Seth Rich, who was murdered last summer. A federal investigator telling Fox News that an FBI forensic report of Rich's computer showed he made contact with WikiLeaks through a former reporter and London-based WikiLeaks director, Gavin McFadden. The investigator told Fox News Rich provided McFadden with more than 44,000 emails, nearly 18,000 attachments. Rich was murdered near his D.C. home on the morning of July 10th. But his wallet, his cell phone, his watch not taken. WikiLeaks 12 days later published internal emails showing top DNC officials trading ideas on how to hurt Senator Bernie Sanders at the polls and those emails resulting in the resignation of Debbie Wasserman Schultz, who is the chair of the DNC and the DNC's three top officials because of the obvious conclusion portrayed in those emails between the DNC and the Clinton campaign. Rich's contact with WikiLeaks corroborated by private investigator and former D.C. detective Rod Wheeler who was hired by a third party to investigate this case. A rich family spokesman claiming the report is unsubstantiating and added, quote, even if tomorrow an email was found, it is not a high enough bar of evidence to prove any interactions as emails can be altered, and we've seen that those interested in pushing conspiracies will stop at nothing to do so. Those are the words uh, of the family spokesperson who is also... Uh, a democratic uh, 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 crisis management uh, and public relations expert. My next guest is investigating the murder of Seth Rich. He says there is some degree of uh, exchange between Rich and WikiLeaks that occurred before his death. And joining me now with the latest, the man hired to investigate the case by a third party. Rod Wheeler joins us, former D.C. detective, Fox News contributor, and Rod, uh, good to have you with us. And I know this is a complicated case. I want to say first to sure. the family uh, who have expressed concerns about the the evidence here and what it actually means uh, that we're being sure. very sensitive to this. But we're also looking at this case uh, in, in the public interest, uh, in fact, in the national interest, to try to discern what the the D.C. Metropolitan Police and the FBI have not been able to do to this point, and uh, we're going to do so with every every sensitivity that we can bring to their concerns, uh, with every effort also to get ultimately to the truth, which I know the family must desperately, desperately seek. Uh, Rod, this federal investigator, we're we're in an unusual situation. An FBI forensic uh, 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 report showing 44,000 emails, uh, 18,000 attachments. That approximates just about what was released by WikiLeaks uh, through mm -hmm. uh, the campaign and uh, leading up to the election itself last summer. Do you think that's a coincidence? Well, no, I actually don't think it's a coincidence, but I do want to uh, emphasize uh, first off here, Lou, that I have never seen the emails themselves. The information that I have gotten is information that has come through Fox News from that uh, federal investigator. And then what I've done is taken that information to try to corroborate it. Mm -hmm. Because what we want to do whenever we have a source, as you well know, <clears throat> we always like to check on the credibility of that information coming what you, in. What have you found and in that regard? Well, what I have found is that his information that he shared with Fox News is pretty consistent with everything else that I've been learning, including the fact that right now no one seems to know where the computers are that belong to Seth Rich. Uh, the computers obviously were confiscated at some point. The police department tells me they don't know where they are. The FBI says they're not involved. So my question uh, is, well, who has the computers? Yeah, who has a computer and why first? as the primary investigative uh, uh, department, why doesn't the D.C. Metropolitan Police know where evidence is? And if there was a forensic, and there has been, a forensic report created by the FBI, why don't right. the investigating detectives know where it is, 
what's in those emails, how many there are. We have a very precise number from that federal investigator, but none of this explains why the FBI is involved and why right. uh, there, there are claims that the D.C. detectives were told to stand down. Right, and that's a claim that I actually heard myself from a detective who said, Rod, we were told not to investigate this fully. Now, see, that's interesting because that's consistent with what this federal investigator said. The federal investigator never knew, Lou, that I had heard from a detective in the police department to stand down. Well, if this guy says the same thing, you have to start saying to yourself, well, maybe there's some truth behind this. So that's why I think when you look at the totality of everything that we have right now, it's very consistent with what this federal investigator has said. Now, I don't think that the police department has intentionally covered up anything pertaining to this case. I think it comes from someone above the police department. That's just my sense, uh, Lou. And we should point out the mayor herself uh, denying that she issued any kind of stand-down order, uh, as described, uh, obviously, by uh, some of those within the department. But again, we don't have an explanation why Washington, D.C. seems to be where inv investigations go to die, whether they originate with the federal government or the D.C. Metropolitan Police. This is a strange, right. strange, again, unresolved, uh, investigation with obvious frustration on the part of the local detectives who are uh, who have this uh, case in their hands uh, as well as uh, the federal authorities again without explanation about why federal authorities are involved here that's right and no one has been able to give us any adequate uh, explanation as to why the feds would be involved I think the feds are involved um, and I think I think there's a lot more information that's going to come out with, uh, with regards to this case. But I do want to say that the, the Rich family is very concerned about this. The Rich family believes it was still a street, bot street robbery, mm -hmm. which it could have been. Uh, so I don't want, I want to make sure that that's clear. We don't know who or why well, we Seth ended to, up dead. We haven't been able to determine, perhaps you have, uh, that there were any murders in that neighborhood at all uh, in, in recent no. years. So well, the last murder of, occurred in 2010, Lou, right, right. 2010. So this is a, quite an exception, particularly in a city that is broadly as violent as Washington and deadly as Washington, yeah. D.C. is. And there seems to be a quick reflex here to say, you know, this was a first, it was a, burg, a, a robbery uh, on the right. part of the police department. Obviously, it was not because nothing was taken uh, from, uh, from Seth Rich. He was alive for two hours, we have no record that a single police officer or detective ask him who shot you. Uh, we have, it is a peculiar, peculiar case from start to finish. Uh, your thoughts as we wrap up here about where we're well, headed you know, now. Right. Just to go along with that real quickly, we also don't have body cameras that I know the police officers were wearing on the scene the night in which Seth was killed. That's a problem because we know for a fact those officers had on body cameras. No one knows where the video is. I think it, we're going to have to continue to look at this case and hopefully more will come out as the days go by, Lou.